silly me for thinking I could ever live in a place where I wouldn't hear sirens every day. Uh, I'm still in Texas, but I moved and I have a lot better lighting. It's looking a little bit more human and a little bit less allegory of the cave. I'm doing a tattoo tour because I'm starting to run out of space in my brain for memories of what I've gotten and how much it was, where I got it from, pain levels. And I like to keep a record of that, but I'm not trying to put all that into my notes app. So I was like, let me make a video and then it'll live on YouTube forever and ever and ever. And then I can just reference that whenever. At some point I'm gonna invest in a tripod, but it's not that day. I also changed clothes because I realized I was wearing shirt no pants and you can't really see tattoo shirt no pants. Every time I get a text, it inches a little bit more and more off the ledge too. We've learned nothing since the hair dyeing video. I have 40 tattoos. Let's go in order of what I got them. That would be more, more helpful for me. I don't really claim this one as my first tattoo, but it is technically. It is that little tiny dot, not the O, the little dot. I got this with someone who is no longer my friend. This was our first, both of our first times getting tattoos. And we kind of just researched like the night before, did not know anything about it. The place was called like Big Big Daddies or Big Papas or something like that. Already not a good sign. Shop minimum, which is a normal thing, was like $60. So this did cost $60. And I think, yeah, it was 18 at the time, but I was so terrified of my parents being that I was like, just do a little dot. And they're like, just, just do a little heart, do a little letter. And I was like, they're gonna see, they're gonna see. They definitely had some interesting vibes. It was two guys in the shop. Also, when we were sitting in the car afterwards, he like, he came outside the car and he like jumped on the window and he was like, are you guys doing weed in here? <laughs> Not great customer service, but you know, I've had worse experiences. That's how it is with men, you know? I just say, I've had worse experiences. <laughs> oh, it's so bad out here for us. Anyway, second, um, Hollywood. This is the Hollywood sign from Bojack Horseman. An episode that got me was the view from halfway down. That episode, that sponge, that episode, yeah. And I got this at a place called Gypsy Rose Tattoo in Houston. It was either $60 or $80, I don't remember. And I'd say pain is like a five. Probably was like a six or a seven then, being my first, second tattoo, but like a five. It's on right on the ribs, so it was kind of an interesting place. Also, definitely, <laughs> technically, technically wise, definitely not my best tattoo. Probably my worst, actually. But I, this is my favorite tattoo. Like, I don't know why. I love it. Third, this tattoo, this for it. It's not the the wiggly thing, it's the letter down the words down in the middle. Ooh. D I S R I T. I swear if UNT emails me one more time. Literally I thought this person outside was me. Is that not me in the future? What was I talking about? Oh, I got this on my 20th birthday. Um at a place called Dark Ages Studio. Very good shop, extremely expensive. I got this from an artist named Summer Sanchez. I was just a walk-in, we were getting tattoos that night, and there was this song. Okay, before then I had worked at Shake Shack. Terrible place, another story, but there was this song every single, every second hour, the song called Disparate Youth by Santi Gold would play. And you know when you work in retail or food and you hear the same song over and over again because they just recycle the same playlist every four hours for eight hour shifts and I was working at double. But I was like annoyed and then I was like, wait, this is kind of good. This song is kind of good. I was like, let's get that. Let's do that. It was kind of a spur of the moment. I show it to her. At first it was like this. She was like, the womanly figure is gonna make it so that the word is warped. What she meant was my yiddies were gonna go like that and make the word go like that. Huh? I don't know what she's talking about though, but like, it's not giving, oh my gosh. Not my deodorant stain. It's not giving voluptuous, it's not giving buxom. 
Um, maybe she thought I had a little bit more growing to go, but I was like, you do you. I'm, I'll defer to the artist. I usually do. $80, quick walk-in, back work, maybe at six. Um, and I definitely did not heal it correctly, but still a good tattoo. Next. Shh. That's the tattoo. I got this also from Summer. So Summer moved from Dark Ages to this other studio called High Seas Tattoo, which is run by this brother and sister, but also low key. One of the artists, like the sister, one of the founders is dating the front desk person. And she's also his mentor. So I'm like, how do you like, do, how do you do that? Like imagine fighting and then the next day you're learning like, how to do stipple shading from them and you have to do it for 10 hour shifts like i would kill myself but you know i hope they have a long happy relationship i don't remember what inspired this i think i was really upset because people were yapping in my why is my mom calling me decline i need people to be more quiet that's probably what it was because i was probably in a class and some you know that one guy who's always in like the back with his buddies always talking during class like um i actually sort of that's probably what inspired it. We'll never know. This was either $100 or $120, maybe like a five pain wise. Healed pretty fast. The only thing is I wear, or at the time I wear my Air Forces. Well, let's be honest. I wear my Air Forces every day. It's getting bad. They don't go with every outfit. But back then I was worse. I would wear those with like, I went as Princess Kita for Halloween and I wore Air Forces with that. Bruh. I need a beverage. You know what I really hate is when People on YouTube will like start eating or start drinking during their video and then you have to watch them take a sip and go ah. before the video starts, like shut up and start the video. I definitely taste it doesn't matter. <laughs> Who cares? Next, 12 dancing princesses is what I have it referenced as, but it is this severed head right here. This is as close as I can get. <laughs> so I'm not about to go into the whole history of the 12 Dancing Princesses fairy tale. Don't know what it is. And if you don't, it's not my fault. I should have had a better childhood. And mine was not great. So it is a fairy tale by Brothers Grimm or whomever. <laughs> I'm getting cold. If you've seen the Barbie movie, not really the same thing because there was some beheadings in the original story. Basically, the soldier the prince at the inn or whichever one couldn't figure out why the 12 dancing princesses were where they were going at night he got beheaded in the original story and the prince at the end manages to follow them and he figures out where they go and then their whole like little night thing is exposed and he gets to marry the princess he wants and even as a child i was like why was he in their business like that like they weren't harming anybody they were just going to like a rave with men and women's business when they need to be in the toolbox when they need to be in the excel sheets like ugh, i'm getting mad right now and it's not even real so i always fantasize that the final remaining prince got his head cut off too and that's what this is him with his head cut off um i commissioned this from an artist i don't remember their username so i'll put it here I think the drawing itself was about $70 because it originally had a little goblet at the bottom but I ended up cutting that out and the tattoo itself was I think $350 either $350 or $450 which at the time was not feasible for me but I did not say anything I was like he was like $350 and I was like yes that's so doable let's go for it Let's go for it. As soon as he turned around, I was in my bank account transferring from my savings. I got this at high seas as well. It was maybe a six, seven. I don't really remember, but it was right on my sternum. But I will say I did like this experience because he had his headphones on. And me personally, I don't like talking when I get tattoos. He never said a word. His music was on, my music was on. I was vibing, he was vibing. I love that experience. No hate to my yappers, but I just, I can't be concentrating on making conversation and the pain and sitting still, you know what I mean? Next up, my first arm tattoo. It is the girl with the pearl earring painting by Vermeer, but 
very much simplified. I don't know if you can notice, but it's not really what the painting looks like. Um, I also commissioned this from an artist and I took it to a new shop called Golden Girl, which no longer exists due to some extreme drama, which I'm not going to get into. This was a walk-in done by an artist named Aisha. Oh my god! <laughs> I got all of them off several minutes ago. What was I talking about before my eye collapsed on itself? Asia. Asia! Um, I wanna say it was like $50, $50-$75. Walk-in prices back in the olden days of 2021 were very cheap. Literally like a three or two pain. I have a long and complicated history with Vermeer and Calder, which we'll get into later. No long. But I love classical artists. I actually don't. Some of them were like doing too much. Noodle! Noodle! My girl Noodle! It was also like maybe 75. Um, I have really been into the song Dare by Gorillaz. I also have a long and complicated history with that song. Going back to the Nancy Drew movie soundtrack, which was a masterpiece, the movie itself a masterpiece. The whole video was her dancing. I'm just gonna put it on my computer. This is getting ridiculous. I wish I could like complete a thought. I put it in later. So I put it in later. And so I put her here. I was like, you know what? Let's put her on my elbow. So when I go like that, I gotta stand up again. This is like the move she was making in the video, like hips, hips, hips. This one was a little bit more painful because the skin right there, my theory is that it's because the skin right there is really thin. Little did I know, it's just the whole ditch that's the problem. But we'll get into that in a second. Moving on. So this was a three-parter. I got three tattoos at once. Altogether, it was like 125. This is Aisha again. Aisha's, every time I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, I would get, <laughs> I would get like lucky mad, like, charge me more. Charge me more. And then, you know, I would pay the 125 or whatever. I was tip. By the way, this doesn't count tips. I was tip at least. I don't know percentages but minimum thirty dollars so in that session i got this guy it is a milkman with a devil devil horns and a devil tail this girl is this is ellington from the series of unfortunate events prequel all the wrong questions and then i got a smiley face which is now covered up pain like five six like not that bad honestly i got this because i'm lactose intolerant and it was one of those videos where it's like drawing tattoos for people with like mental illnesses or whatever and one of them was for people who are lactose intolerant and this one really spoke to me i was like the milk man the milk man his, himself the milk man himself has always been a strange concept to me like for people really getting bottles of milk delivered to their door like every day and there was a milk man. There was like a guy who did it. And he had a little stupid outfit. I mean, it was cute. You know what, milkman, if it was still around, it would be on the list of male thought jobs. This one I got because I love this book series. I am obsessed with the art style. The artist is named, I believe, Seth. He's a, a monominous. Monom Anonymous? He goes by one name, like Cher or Stevie Wonder. This is Ellington Faint, that's her name. Lemony always described her as having question mark shaped eyebrows, which throughout all five books, I was like, there's no way that looks like how I think it looks like. Next, back to Asia. got this one. Steve Lacey, something bad is about to happen to me from the song Dark Red. So at that time, I, this was like the peak of my anxiety. I have generalized anxiety disorder. I have extreme or had extreme anxiety around driving and being out in crowds and just being outside in general. Like I would not leave my apartment. The feeling, the thing with anxiety is it's difficult to explain to people who don't have it because it's more than just being nervous. And I'm not gonna turn this into like a therapy session, but People with anxiety know like there's really nothing like feeling like something bad <laughs> something bad is about to happen and it's 
every second of your life like every second something's about to happen like and when i heard that song i was like that's it like something bad is about to happen to me like and if i'm gonna feel like this for the rest of my life i'm gonna make fun of it for most of us i would say i actually don't know i speak for all anxiety i speak for all anxiety when i say that most of us know that our anxieties are unjustified and at times a little silly like this extreme thing is not gonna happen also probably have a little bit of ocd but we'll figure it out in a few years this one was also either 100 or 120 if she killed it i brought her the idea of like where i wanted it placed and then the font and she made it wiggly for me and it looks great i love it next color the tiny morale it starts it hangs like this like sideways so i'll try and rotate if you can see it's all this up here these little parts and i love the way it fits my arm like i love it so it is a hanging mobile from the mobile artist alexander calder who he's dead he's no longer he's no longer living um, Alexander Calder, who was a prolific American sculptor. I love Calder. I love his mobiles. This one's called Jacaranda. It's inspired by the Jacaranda tree, which I think is an African tree. And I just, I love his mobiles. I love making mobiles. He really is the reason I got into making them. They're so special to me. This is my favorite form of sculpture. And I wanted that immortalized. And this was like 125 or 150. Again, insane. Like, this is like six inches. That's what she said. I was really fighting it, but that's what she said. Next, Tyler. So this one I saved up for because I knew it was going to be a little bit. Went back to summer at high seas and got this guy. Lots of detail. I hope it focuses. But this is Tyler's business card from Fight Club. But Fight Club is my favorite movie of all time. I think it's hilarious. It is so homoerotic and people don't realize it. Like, guys, are you serious? They literally kissed in the well, they didn't kiss, but they kind of kissed in the movie. And film bros would be like, this is where I need to be Tyler Durden. Like, he's the epitome of masculinity. And he serves. He serves so much, like the scene where he's in like the bus and he's like hanging out, armpits all out. First of all, armpits out, whore. Armpits all out, uh, pants all the way down below the V-line, hanging out with the boys. That's not straight. Um, I mean this, I mean this with all the love in my heart. Like, be more gay, be more Tyler Durden, but not in the way that nasty, mas hyper masculine men think. Could it, can't tell you a single thing that happened in the movie. Can't tell you a single thing about my favorite song. Can't tell you a single thing about my favorite book. But it's mine. Literally the other day, someone was like, oh, the car crash scene of the Fight Club. I was like, when was that, girl? I've seen the movie like so many times at this point. Anyway, I got his business card. Lots and lots of little teeny tiny details in this. Paper Street, Soap Co., The Little Angels, his name, the address. Obviously, a lot of the details have faded by now. I'll put like a picture of when it was nice and fresh and crispy, but it's still honestly holding up really well for its age. Summer's the goat. Summer is a beast with that micro realism. She said this one was called what she calls a butthole clincher because she was clenching while doing it. <laughs> I was like, girl, me too. Like, I'm scared. Um, I think it was 220, 220, 250. Honestly, not enough. She's incredible. Um, Pain-wise, maybe a 5.5. I feel like I've been naming everything 5 or 5.5, but it really only gets bad later. <laughs> or maybe I, my skin is just more sensitive now. Or maybe I just don't remember anything. I'm getting hot. Next up, lizard. Oh, <laughs> my lizard skeleton. This is a lizard skeleton by an artist unseasoned water is poison from small shop tattoo the same of the shop in brooklyn now this is like the epitome of tattooers will say oh i got a private studio and they show you this it was literally in an abandoned like office building we went up to the third floor opened the door it's like an empty hallway i'm like that's it it's over for me 
I'm watching this tattoo. I'm getting killed. I had to buzz into this random door. I open it. It's gorgeous inside. Beautiful open wooden floors. So scary outside. I don't know what was going on with that. I was visiting my sister and we were out in Brooklyn for the day and I had been trying to get a tattoo the whole week and I couldn't find anyone. So I'm on Instagram, I'm like, man, I gotta get a tattoo from New York before I leave. I find this unseasoned water is poison and I'm like DMing, I'm like, hey, I saw you're a lizard. Do you have availability in one hour? <laughs> Don't do this, by the way. Thankfully, they respond. They're like, absolutely, yes. Decreased the price for me from 250 to 200 for whatever reason. Shout out to them. The experience itself was wonderful. It was super gentle. Again, I'm not great with tiny little needles, so this one was maybe like a six or a seven, maybe a seven. Um, but very gentle, very kind. <laughs> the buyer was like, "We don't allow shoes in our in our um in our sanctuary. We will provide beverages. What are your pronouns? Like, please, like, no hate. Like, love that. I love when they're like a little too into you. You know, great experience." no complaints i did unfollow them because they they did something a little sussy on their in their story like kind of rude nasty so i did unfollow but overall a great experience um i got this because i have this this memory many many years ago my parents were like we're gonna visit my your cousins in dallas the cousins in dallas oh my gosh i'm in dallas now <gasps> i'm the cousin in dallas we arrive at their house in the middle of the night never met them by the way we arrive at their house in the middle of the night. We go to sleep. We wake up in these people's house. The best week of my life. I have yet to have that much fun as I did that week. Like, all we did was lounge around and skateboard and play. Never saw them again after that. Still don't really know who they were. They were white also. I really don't know who they were. My core memory, all that just to say, my core memory of that is one of the guys, one of my cousins, coming up to me and like going like you want to see something cool and being a dummy of maybe seven six seven i was like oh yeah absolutely now listen to me if a man ever says to you do you want to see something cool run in the other direction he takes me to the shed he opens the door to the shed there's a lizard skeleton suspended on the wall and like the crack in between like the door hinge like this i'm like oh my gosh how is it stuck in the wall fully intact he's like listen somebody slammed the door killed the wizard smushed his brain out ants came ate the meat and the skin off the lizard left the bones intact i was like that's the coolest thing i've ever heard in my life now that i think about it is that something that could really happen <laughs> if not like how did how was it there though i really don't know i really don't know if he's if he was lying or not but one of my core memories Next up is the Arnarfi portrait. You really kind of have to say it like that. The Arnarf, Arnarfi, Arnarf, Arnofini. That's what I said. The Arnarfini. Listen, you saw the you saw the word. Who? Arnarfi. The Arnarfi portrait. The Art Narfri? Anyway, it's a painting. For as long as I have remembered, I've hated this painting. Like, it's an objectively good painting, but I really hate it. There's honestly not much more to say on the background beyond that. Like, I hate this painting. I have to get it. And I thought it was the perfect place, like, right here. So, I did return to Golden Girl for this. By this time, Aisha was gone. This is done by Angel, aka Hell Yeah, Yes, on Instagram. Angel is a beast. This was, I think, 600? Either 600 or 800, but I really think it was 600, which is insane. Like, look how big it is. It's like a wood, <laughs> like a, ooh, a woodcut style, like etching. I specifically asked for like an etching style. They were like, I got you, I got you. Maybe six, seven, um, 6.57. It hurt a little bit more around the shin bone as is expected, but really did not take that long. This was a 21st birthday present to myself. Next, Jesse, Jesse. Okay, there's no way I'm gonna be able to show this. Hey, hey girl, hey. <laughs> Someone in the back. I'm like wiggling. It's Jesse, Jesse Custer. 
<laughs> I'm gonna pretend I didn't forget. T Custer from the Preacher comments, which is, I believe, Vertigo, which is my favorite comic series ever. Again, could not tell you what happened in it. Not a clue. I remember reading the series. I got it from the library. Wait, when's the last time I went to a library? Maybe that's where my brain doesn't work. Before, all I had ever read was like Marvel and DC, which can get dark sometimes, but not really. Preacher, they were just doing anything in that book. And I was obsessed. I love Jesse. He's probably the reason why he was like the first Catholic I was really into. I really don't need to unpack very though, but anyway, I love a Catholic man. <sighs> I'm incriminating myself. All I can say is if you haven't read the series, read it. It's amazing, I think. <laughs> Watch the TV show. Worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Turn it off. Couldn't get past the first episode. Me, I love a good, a good faithful book to screen adaptation. Every detail be, better be perfect. That's what I need. Like, listen to the book. It's perfect. It was perfect the way it is. Why I turn on the show and there's a character from book eight in the pilot. This one was a little bit more painful. The 7.5 to 8. The shading, like the blackout part, is impeccable. I didn't even go up for a, a second session. Like, packed in, packed in. This is why I mean when I say Angel was the goat. Like, who's next? Zaga! So this one, I filmed a video for because I was having an anxiety attack and I ended up deleting it because I was having an anxiety attack. First ever and only hand cooked tattoo. This one was Pegasus Studios. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. The artist comes down and greets me. Oh, their name was Stacy, aka a human plant on Instagram. And they come down and they bring me upstairs and it's a gorgeous shop inside like plants and like artwork and stickers and like stained glass and like have a seat there's a cat there for some reason artist was fantastic i think this one was 200 it is the zaba logo that's not clarifying it's the logo from the glass and wolves album zaba which is my third favorite glass and wolves tattoo or third famous third famous third favorite glass and wolves album thank you and I sent them a picture of how I wanted it right on top of the Discord. I didn't want to cover it up, but I did want to put something else here because I felt like it was a little empty and kind of awkward. But it is still a fantastic album. You should listen to it if you haven't already. The thing I love about Glass Animals, this turns into a Glass Animals session. The thing I love about Glass Animals is that all of their albums have a very specific like world behind them. But Zaba is very like mystical, like dark forest, dripping cave, like magical fountain -y. anyway it's a great album for relaxing and like vibing i will say it wasn't more painful than machine but it was a very it was different every time they poked it around here i could feel it in like my leg which was a little unnerving and it's a little bit more and this is no hate to like hand poke or like the artist but hand poke for me is like a little bit the process is a little bit more annoying <laughs> Like the thing with me when I get tattoos it is not that like the pain becomes unbearable, more so that I become, <laughs> I get like angry. My brain is like, okay, you're in pain and not you're not like getting away from the pain and you start to get pissed. And then you're like, this person is inflicting pain on me. Like, let's hurry up, let's get it going. Let's come on, let's get this to stop. So with this, it was more like annoying because it's like individual pokes and it's individual like, Pain, okay, pain's over, stop. Another one, okay, that was annoying, like over and over. <laughs> Next up is, girl, oh my god, I don't know what this tattoo. This one I did myself. As you can see. It says, well, it's supposed to say G L G W K T N, which stands for God Loves Girls, shut up! God Loves Girls Who Know Their Names, which was the name of the performance in which I did it in. So this was, a, <laughs> for some reason, my communications major in, in UNT, when I was at UNT, they require us to do a performance field in communications. I don't know why, I'm not a theater major, but they make us do it. And one of the classes I had to take was performance art. So I was like, you know what, let me do something really stupid. I think this was my, was my final. And yes, I did get an A. I've always really loved art that is interactive and art that requires the audience to be part of it and where the artist is like physically involved. So I've always really liked, like I said, Marina Bramovic, like she 
tortures herself like i love stuff like that like let's get into it like get into it y'all but basically i sat on the table on this dinner table that i created with all my class eating jello with stuff stuck in it and i got on the table and i started tattooing myself i got this tattoo machine from one of my friends who got it from aliexpress and when i went to pick it up it was in a velvet crown royale bag and i said don't worry i cleaned it and i said great and then i cleaned it because i didn't want to die gld whatever um next another three-part session back to asia who at this point had moved to a different shop in dallas so i got um what does that mean let me show you what i have like i just have this is how i track my tattoos i have one word to describe them and i'm like i don't know what that is charlotte joker poison where's poison charlotte don't look at my toes this one joker <laughs> this one what is poison i'm really like stuck like what is this oh it's this one <laughs> It's the poison bottle from um, Emperor's New Groove. Why don't I just say like Cusco or something? Altogether, I think like 150, 200. I was still getting like, you know, the Denton prices because I'm a return client or whatever. I'm faithful, five, six, 5.5, six pain. First one I got was Charlotte the dog from the series, The Midnight Gospel, which I tried to watch again, like a couple days ago. A little bit more pretentious than I remember still visually really interesting and also really funny my favorite character was charlotte the dog which is like this intergalactic dog that has like a portal underneath her and she like sucks things into it that clancy the main character loki stole it's on netflix but i always encourage pirating poison like i said poison bottle from emperor's new groove cusco emperor cusco may or may not have been my first love she recently had to come to terms with to terms with that reality. He's tall and like skinny and funny and he has like longish hair and he's like a little bit sap. I'm like, oh anyway, I'm not talking about Cusco anymore. The last one I got on the back of my ankle was a Joker. Um I commissioned why well, I didn't commission it, it was like rejected artwork from this person who I commissioned a clown drawing. Um here's the artist. I cut out like the top part of it and like, his little hat and I put in local joker because my mother my mother likes to say likes to refer to random people as local joke local jokers local jokers like that I thought it was you know AAB I thought it was a, a black person thing turns out it's just a my mother thing I spoke to the to the black community and I said do you guys know what it means when you're like that local joker over there they're like never heard that before in my life I said okay but it's a good like gender neutral term as much as my mother does not respect non-binary pronouns local joker kind of was like the defining like forget saying partner forget saying folks that local joker over there this local joker right here like anyway i thought it was funny so i got it on the back of my ankle and my mother did not think it was funny moving on i feel like one of like the ghosts of winter past or whatever it's this one right here it's a hand and it has a dagger through it and it says it's like a traditional okay that kind of works it's a hand with a dagger throwing going through it and it says dying out here i'm a little bit of a casual fallout boy listener i know a couple of their songs but nothing crazy the first note when <laughs> I love Willow Boy and I like their new album and there's a part in Love from the other side where he says you know I'm dying out here and I'm like yes and he goes every lover got a little dag in their hand I'm like yes I put all my brain power into meshing those two lyrics together and came up with this and I got it at a shop called Aces Tattoos which is where all the college the Denton College kids go and it was I think $200 worth of steel and I got it from an artist named Tanner Prine, who is at Tanner Prine Tattoos. Dot dot com on Instagram, and not painful at all. Actually, that's a lie. It was pretty painful. It was like a seven, 
because I have a scar right here, which I forgot I had. I'll be the first to tell you, tattooing over scar tissue doesn't feel great. It's good. It's a good tattoo. What can I say? Tanner is Tanner's great. I really tried not to get tattoos from it. That was like the first tattoo I've gotten from Man ever since the dot, which I feel like it was a lifetime ago that I started talking about. Why don't shut up and stop yapping? Next, Kafka. So we go back to High Seas Tattoo. And I'm in my Kafka era. I'm in my Kafka era even today. This is the Metamorphosis book cover. Although I recently learned that he didn't even want for there to be a bug depiction on the cover. You know what, Kafka? I feel like Kafka and I have a connection though. I don't know. Um, this is another hate tattoo, I guess. I didn't like the book at all. It made me really sad and I was like, that really sucked. Me personally, I like books and movies and TV shows with happy endings. I don't want to feel sad at the end of the day. Like, what the hell? Sad songs too, like, bro. Just listen to something happy. I solved it. I saw the person actually. But like I said, me and Kafka, we got something. We got something going on. Um, I took to a guy named Joey. Absolutely gorgeous. I think it was 200, 250, I don't remember. Um, and it fit right, his little his little leggy fit right in between the something bad is about to happen to me. And I was like, wait, this is literally the whole book. Like something bad is about, I mean, something bad happened. <laughs> That's what it should say, something bad happened. Such a good book, but don't read it. Pain was like five or six. The thing about these is that it's just, there's a shirtless guy bicycling outside. I hate when men don't wear clothes. Next up, possibly the most painful tattoo I've ever gotten in my entire life, besides my knee. But I'm still like debating like which one was the, hmm, which one was the worst experience of my life? This right here. Gaga. This is another hate tattoo. As much as I love Lady Gaga and her weirdness, there's this one scene in the applause music video where she is on that, her head is on the body of a goose. And when I was young, I was like, I don't like this very much. I don't like that scene. I would skip it. Um, this was actually really smiley face used to be. I was like, perfect. It's like a oval shape. Originally, actually, I thought that her body was gonna be on the like curvature of the, I had a very specific vision. Obviously it didn't happen that way. Tattoos do no best. But when I tell you, I was crying, shaking in the chair, sweating. I was stuck to the chair. I, tears were literally coming out of my eyes. 100 out of 10, if not 200 out of 10. I was like, is it me? I went back to high seas. And originally I asked for Joey to do this. And Joey was like, you know, I don't really feel comfortable doing cover ups at this point in my career. I was like, totally fine, it's fine. I was like, you know what, who, who will do it is Laura, who is one of the founders of the tattoo, or the tattoo parlor. Um, she was like, yeah, let's do it, let's book it. I didn't know what I was getting into. I will say this, the only thing that makes this less painful than my knee is because she had me clamped to the chair. Her full body weight was on my wrist right here. She was hunched over like that. I couldn't move my arm at all. Every second from the very beginning, I was like, I don't wanna be here anymore. I'm done, I'm gone. And it wasn't even that, it was like, people were like, oh, when I tell them it's painful, they're like, oh, it's all that black. No, it's not. It was the little tiny bits. It's always the little tiny bits. <sighs> I didn't leave that shop. I came in at like two, I didn't leave until nine. Everyone was gone. The shop was closed. Everyone was just sitting around waiting for a meeting. <laughs> I drove home in silence. Woke up the next morning, I couldn't bend my arm. Whole arm was, whole arm was, it was just a lot. However, I will say she did a fantastic job. But I'm glad I got it done now, because never again. And I'm not doing my leg ditch. Not gonna happen. But that one was like, I think 300. I don't even, I don't even remember. That whole day, gone from my memory. Magpie. Am I like, kind of giving muscle? Let me be brief. Let me be brief. Obama meme still funny, guys? Obama. Anyway, the tattoo is a magpie holding a um, necklace. And you can't really tell, but at this end is like a little jewel. I'll put a picture right here. Actually, I probably won't because I don't have the picture. <laughs> Let me try and do this in caveman terms. I like picks shiny things off the ground. Magpie like picks shiny things off the ground. 
reason I like pick shit tiny things off the ground is because my childhood best friend, Audrey, had a, very, a huge room full of little trinkets and jewels and toys and things. And I would love to go around whenever I went to visit, which is, oh my God, I wish I was five. I wish I was five again. Like, I literally, that was the best time of my life. Like, I didn't know how good I had it. Like, look at me now. Oh, I'm getting emotional thinking about being five years old. Like, get a girl. <laughs> she made me a max lid. I think she made me a trinket lover today. Um, she gave me this little blue jewel, which I'm a, a black and a black and gray girly, so it's not blue. But I'm, I've been thinking about this being the only color one. Um, I gave it to my artist. I gave it to Angel. I said, "Listen, Angel, I'm a little bit of a freak for shiny things on the ground." I said, "Tell me no more." Gorgeous, beautiful diving. Also, these were already here, and they worked around it so well. Like it flows so perfectly. It's so British. And I don't think, even think they had to adjust it that much. It is an homage to Audrey and my childhood and my love for maximalism and trinketry and I miss her a lot and I've been thinking recently, wouldn't it be weird if I followed her on Instagram? Um, anyway, great tattoo. That's all I'm gonna say about it. 300 or 400. Angel killed it once again. Black, packed in, packed in gorgeous. Next up, Mission Impossible. Back to Tanner at Aces. It's this one. Oh, no, it's not. It's this one. See, I don't know what's back here. I don't know what's going on back here. It's none of my business. But it is a burning cassette player, and it says good luck underneath. There are a lot of things about childhood media and the lack thereof in my childhood that I resent. Um, but I will say, ugh, we had some good times or whatever. I wasn't allowed to watch childhood shows like many normal children, like no Nickelodeon, no Cartoon Network, no, uh, P I mean, I could watch PBS Kids, but who's watching the Wildcats? But I did watch a lot of like 70s, 80s shows with my mother and my sister. And one of those was the original Miss Mission Impossible. I've never seen the movies. I'm not gonna watch the movies because I'm just a little bit scared of Tom Cruise, actually. But one of the things that they would do at the beginning of every episode was Jim, the main character, he would get a cassette tape. He would get a cassette tape at the beginning of each episode and the guy would be like, listen, here's your mission. Should you choose to accept, accept it? This tape will self-destruct in five seconds. Good luck, Jim. And the tape would blow up. You know, it's a good memory for me. Like, I have good memories as associated with that. So I got the burning cassette and I've got good luck. I didn't want to put good luck, Jim, because to be honest, I don't really like Jim. He was far from the best character. I went back to Tanner and he drew it up from my terrible, terrible drawing. And it was like 150, 200, something great, something light, something light. Six close to my bitch. Huh? I'm almost done, if you can believe it. Next up, this one right here, which you definitely cannot see, it says, I don't speak German. And then right here, I haven't been able to stand on one leg since the incident. She's right there. Ugh. This one, I went back to Asia at Midgard. I don't speak German is a line from Lady Gaga's song, Shaza. Lover. Anyway, Shaza, I was in my Shaza era. And I was like, listen, Asia, I want you to put I don't speak German on me. And she was like, I got you. No questions asked. That's the thing I love about Aisha. Like, I come up with my goofiest idea, like the most stupidest thing. And she's like, absolutely. Um, and then on my ankle, I need to stop showing feet. My stuffy, my stuffy Gigi. She's been with me since I was five. Oh my God, <laughs> think about being five again. She's been with me through it all. Her name is Gigi, G-E, capital G-E, capital G-E. Don't get it twisted, it's not G-I-G-I. -I. She is a tall question mark. She no longer has any eyes, unfortunately. Um, I don't know where they are. She has about one third of the original stuffing that she had. This is like ride or die. Like Gigi's been through it all. Like she's really been through it all. And she'll be with me till I die. And she better be cremated with me. Because I'm trying to be cremated. I'm not trying to be buried, like, disgusting. You think I'm gonna let a worm have the last word? Burn me up. 
and then put a little bit of my ashes in like a painting of me and then that way I can haunt the painting literally like two three painting scale I think this was also like 125 thanks Asia moving on the vase <laughs> the vase right back to Asia so this is a vase with a whip in it which my favorite TV show is um it's always sunny in Philadelphia oh my gosh call back to earlier in the video and my favorite episode is the gang gets trapped it is one of the lowest rated episodes in all 15 seasons that they have i remember the first time i ever watched it i literally had to pause i was crying laughing at this scene in which danny uh hello what's devito danny devito frank his character they are basically trying to steal a vase from these people and he goes the ball also he has a whip because each of them have an indiana jones thing they were going on he goes the vase and then he whips it he throws the whip at it um and then attempts to like wrap around it and pull it back which of course he cannot do it shatters i remember really like, crying laughing i wanted it and i got it from asia and it was like 200 dollars, which is insane do you see how big it was let's look at the picture again next up my ibuprofen tattoo I can't see if it's not I'm sorry I have been an ibuprofen girl since I was 14 or 12 let me tell you when I got my period nobody told me about painkillers I was there literally crouched in bed in this position sweating crying begging for my life every month nobody told me that ibuprofen existed I was taking aspirin and like why is this working girl I keep that thing on me. Big ibuprofen should sponsor me. And when the zombie apocalypse comes, I will be there with my ibuprofen to your last days. You're like, oh, the bite, the infection is getting to me. Oh, I'm gonna kill my family. I got my leg cut off. That's the point where my friend was like, girl, you might be like, you're gonna get an ulcer because apparently if you take like more than the recommended amount and a certain amount of time, you can develop a stomach ulcer. Blah, 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 yeah. Who's saying that stuff? Doctors? I'm doing good mentally. I'm always like, let's get a silly tattoo. Let's get a little goopy, quirky, silly tattoo. And I went to High C's and I said, Joey, do you guys know like those trad style tattoos where it's like mom and the heart? And he goes, yeah, yeah. I'm like, can we do that? Except it says ibuprofen. He, to this day, he's like, this is one of my favorite tattoos I've ever done. This is so funny. I was like, yes. This was such a blast to get. I'm really becoming corpo because why did I just say that? This is such a blast. It was maybe like a five, six little. S I'm wasting my spot spice. Um, and it was I think two hundred. Anyway, um, moving on. Snowfree, snowfree. There he is, little boy. So a new shop opened in Denton. Trilogy Tattoo Studios, women owned, queer owned. I am like, whatever the version, the tattoo shop version of a homie hopper is like, <laughs> I've basically been to every shop in Denton. There's only so much you can do. Like, don't tell me to go to the square again. And I've been to the square and that's where Dark Ages is. <laughs> um, I got this from an artist named Red. Her name is Leia Red, but I cannot, like in my head, I cannot stop calling her Sexy Red. It's not Sexy Red. I don't even know why I brought this up. This, nobody had to know. She had a little Snoopy fat flash. And I got the little wizard one. Cause I was like, he's a little wizard guy. Oh, he's a little wizard. And it's Snoopy, like everyone's supposed to be. And his reign will continue. Anyway, this was, I think 
$100 was discounted either $180. The experience was kind of awkward, I will say. I don't know why it was so awkward. Usually I'm alright with new artists, but I don't know. The vibe was kind of weird, like no hate. Next up, my tummy! Oh, what the hell? Why did I do that? It is this winged sheep and this man bear. I fear it is another fall. <laughs> it's another fall of boy tattoo. So my favorite albums from them, well, okay, all of them are good. That's not true. The first one is not good. The first two are not good. The first three are like, uh, the first two are not, I mean, the first two are all right. They're all right. I don't even want to talk about Fall Out Boy. I don't want to talk about them. I look like a cashew weirdo. So this is the Sheep Franklin from the cover art art. From the cover art and Friday on Heart. And Friday on High. Please can we just get to this video? <laughs> no more voices. No more Australian accent. No more talking about Ivan Proven. It is the Infinity on High Sheep. His name is Franklin. And he has little wings on the cover. Oh, I actually have a picture. Franklin the Sheep and his little wings. And then on the bottom, I'll get my favorite Fall Out Boy album, Fully Ado. A man in a bear costume carrying, or a bear, a man in a bear costume carrying a bear. So I got this commissioned from this artist. I get kind of nervous when I do artist commissions. Cause I'm like, I don't want to be like, oh, well, I like that. And then like keep making edits over and over again. So I'll just be like, yeah, thanks, that's great. And then I'll like low key tweak it on my own, which is you're not supposed to do, but like, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> I paid for that. And then I just drew the sheep one on my own. I kind of based off the design. So get an angel, my goat at Golden Girl Rest in Peace. And it was like 500, I think. I asked for it to be broken up into two sessions because I thought I wouldn't be able to handle it. Wasn't that bad, honestly. I never, <laughs> I never got the shading actually, so it's not done. I would like to get it finished at one point, but again, not going back to Denton anytime soon, actually. So, um, originally I had planned for it to be a little bit bigger, like across here, but I kind of like how it turned out. Like, pain. What did I say? Six. I don't remember. Girl, I'm, I'm starting to lose a lot. I'm starting to lose a lot. We only have a few more. Let's go. Disco cats. I got a matching tattoo with my sister and we each drew a cat that we thought represented us dancing at the disco. We went to High Seas, I recommended High Seas, and we got it from Kure. Yes! Yes! My brain worked! He whipped it out in like 15 minutes, if that, 15, 20 minutes. 200 for both? Or 200 per? Next! Okay, we're almost done for real this time. This girly right here. This is another product of not being able to watch child appropriate shows when I was younger. This is from a show called The Avengers. Not The Avengers you may be thinking of. It's about these two like spy espionage type. I guess they're detectives. I read the Wikipedia and I still don't really know what the show is about. The show was very like absurdist from what I remember. I don't even remember what the name man's name was. It doesn't matter. What we care about is her, Emma Peel. Her name was comes from M. Appeal because when they created her character, they were like, she has to have man appeal. And then they shorted that down to M. Appeal. And then they were like, sounds like M. Appeal. We'll just call her M. Appeal. Sucks, by the way. What a sucky origin. But she served every episode. No matter how much they sexualized her, she slayed every Yay! episode she could do judo she could do karate she had a gun on her she had her little cat suit she had her little go go boots like girl loved her loved her she had her little flipped hair um i got this from an artist named car at a shop called lady magnolia which was a new shop up here in dallas which i well it's not new but i freshly newly discovered it shop is gorgeous like prettiest shop i've ever been in beautiful beautiful it's huge there's like i think 15 artists there honestly like a five or six i'll say a six the only thing is she added in some white and i am almost definitely allergic to white ink so i kind of wish she had told me she was going to do that i have a hard time healing white i mean it heals eventually but it takes like twice as long but honestly it looks so much better with the white it was like 250 i think and took 45 minutes if that 
it's me time. I went back to Lady Magnolia this time for an artist called Bailey. When I tell you, I almost laughed because of how big it was. This is how it looks now. It's a horseshoe crab. Um, I got the line work done. I thought I was gonna die. She, it got to the point where she was like, okay, I'm gonna give you some cashews because I think, <laughs> don't get your knee tattooed. Oh my gosh. I didn't think it could get worse than this. The only reason I say this is less bad is because like I said, she had me clamped and I couldn't like wiggle around. This was even harder because I was literally just laying like this and I've had to put all my energy into both clamping down, keeping this leg still and not reacting to the jerk. And I couldn't do it. I thought it was gonna be so much worse than it was when I got home. Cause she was like, I, I'm really sorry we're gonna have to like do two sessions because I just wanna be able to do the job, which is like super professional artist. She was so sweet and so kind. I could not tell that I was jerking around and moving as much as I was. Cause I was literally like, I don't know how she did it, what she did, but it was incredible. Like the lines are super fat and, and crispy. And then the second session I went back numb so, so much better. Like I said, I always do better with shading anyway, but having like the numbing, like, oh, fantastic. It did start to wear off a little bit at the end and I started to feel it, but thankfully it was pretty much over. But anyway, um, this one I think was 500, 550, something like that. I don't know. The time my dad bought me, got, caught me a horseshoe crab and I asked him to throw it back to see what bring our look back. That's the shipped golden standard on the album Folia Do by American rock band Fall Out Boy. Moving on. But this is a chrysanthemum with lady fingers in it like that. I don't know if you can see. Take a look. This was an artist named Willow at Midgard Tattoos. Never been to them before. The gentlest hand I've ever had. That sounded okay. There's probably a better way I could say this the gentlest hand in the tattoo industry it's bad enough that you're getting like a needle dug into you but having someone who's like manhandling you like i get like sometimes you're in the flow and you don't realize or like sometimes you need to move where you need to go but it really helps to have an artist like who is like gentle so this one was also two sessions they're the one who suggested i get numbing cream um i'm allergic to lidocaine i have discovered definitely had trouble breathing um, my jaw got a little bit numb, but it worked though. I just was a little bit twitchy. Honestly, maybe like a seven or eight in pain. But yeah, fantastic. I think was 400, 500. Perfectly executed it. As a child, I loved the book about that little mouse, that little ballerina mouse named Chrysanthemum. What is Parcheesi? It's not real. Okay, last one, let's go. No resistance, nerds, mystery shock. Back in Midgar tattoos. Nerds! No resistance. Mystery shack. It's the nerds logo. It's the nerds mascot. One of those little freaks. I don't think they're nerds. I think they're little freaks. I named him Ted after the 300 milligram nerds rope edible video by Ted Nevison. Oh, no resistance. Unfortunately, I do have to give feet. There's a flower pot, custom flower pot flash that Isha had. And the line from the poem No Resistance by Intozake Intozake Sangha, um, who is a Black American poet. She wrote this book of a, a, a poetry collection called For Color Girls to Consider Suicide, was it called? We had to recite a poem, and I chose this one. Not that I am a colored girl who has considered suicide, I'm one of those things. I'll let you decide which one. I encourage you to read the poem, but it is about a... I'll read it. I have it pinned on my wall, actually. <laughs> Without any assistance or guidance from you, I have loved you assiduously for eight months, two weeks, and a day. Okay, sometimes poems get me the way that they're written because I'm like... I'm very bookmax... book-pilled? Whatever. Clearly I'm not if I'm saying book pill. I left town so I could send to you. You have been no help to me. On my job, you call at three in the morning on weekdays so I could drive 27 and a half miles across the bay before I go to work. 
charming charmin it's actually spelled charming with no in so i think about the toilet paper but you are of no assistance i want you to know this was an experiment to see how selfish I could be. If I would really carry on to snare a possible lover, if I was capable of debasing myself for the love of another, if I could stand not being wanted when I wanted to be wanted, and I cannot. So, with no further assistance and no guidance from you, I am ending this affair. This note is attached to a plant. I've been watering since the day I met you. You may water it your damn self lives were lives were changed and i performed it in a very bad new jersey accent that nobody asked me to do and i made it very personal i had little props that i made a little bit personal um but i still love this poem so i got the flower pot because i felt like oh you know what that reminds me of this poem and then i got you may water it your damn self and i think that my mother's not gonna be happy about this tattoo last one Happy birthday. It's the mystery shack from Gravity Falls. That's pretty much all I have to say. <laughs> Altogether, I think it was 200. I'm still grandfathered in into Denton prices, I was told. Six pain, five, three, four. I was told foot was gonna be a lot worse than it was. It was kind of bad, but nothing compares to this one. If you take nothing from this video, it's that nothing compares to this. Here's the 40 tattoos. Here's the 40 more. Lord.